Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Um, and we're going to look at a very interesting topic. It's a topic that could change your financial destiny. Uh, at least that's my opinion. I think, it, I think it's really important. I think it could really make a huge difference. But we're going to look at BTC wealth transfer or Bitcoin wealth transfer. Could Bitcoin be an opportunity for wealth to be transferred from the rich into the hands of those of us that are not rich? We're going to dig into this. I think you're going to find this fascinating. It is a great topic. Now, we're going to start out looking at what is the distribution of wealth in the world and how much wealth does the rich actually own. We're going to take a look at how much of that wealth needs to move into Bitcoin for Bitcoin to go up dramatically. And then we're going to look at uh, how things has a tendency to grow, like what's the growth rate of technology. And then finally, we're going to take a look at what the wealthy are doing and saying in regards to Bitcoin and what are they publicly saying in terms of their future plans in regards to Bitcoin slash cryptocurrency. Now, in the video, we're going to talk only about Bitcoin. I'm going to mention Ethereum. But what we say about Bitcoin applies to the entire cryptocurrency market because while the cryptocurrency market is not correlated with any other asset, uh, all cryptocurrencies are correlated. So when Bitcoin goes up, all the other cryptocurrencies have a tendency to go up or a lot of them will go up. And when Bitcoin goes down, the vast majority of cryptocurrencies also go down. And so what's good for Bitcoin is also good for, for your favorite crypto coin. So... Maybe you don't like Bitcoin, but you like XYZ coin, whatever that may be. Well, when Bitcoin does good, then your favorite coin typically does good I mean, in most cases. So unless you have a really unusual offshoot of a cryptocurrency. So let's dig into it. This is going to be a great video. Be sure to watch it all the way to the end. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It really helps us out in terms of getting attention through the YouTube algorithms. So if you smash the like button, I promise we'll be eternally grateful to you. Now, this is my disclaimer. You need to know that I'm not a financial advisor. My background is in software engineering, software development, and web development. I'm not a financial advisor, and what we're sharing today is not financial advice. This is actually my opinion. So I'm sharing with you the sort of things that I share with my family and my friends. In fact, when I'm done with this video, I'm going to be encouraging my family and friends to watch this video because some of the things that I'm going to share in this video, um, I want to share with them, but I haven't yet shared it with them. And so some of it's actually brand new information that I want my family and friends to know about. Now, cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. With any investment, it's, it's, you want to be careful and understand whether it's cryptocurrency or something else that you could lose 100% of your investment. So read this paragraph. It actually is excellent financial um, uh, it, 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 these are words of wisdom when it comes to investing. And so to pay attention to them and, and be very careful with what you invest in and make sure that you do your own due diligence and learn more about anything you're investing your own hard-earned money into. So we're going to take a look up at the history of Bitcoin. I'm not going to go into the details of this chart. I'm going to give you enough to understand it. But I recommend you, if you haven't seen this chart from me before, I recommend that you pause the video and spend a little bit of time looking at it and, and trying to absorb what's here. But if you invested $1,000 into Bitcoin and then sold it three years later, what would you get? So if you bought Bitcoin on January 1, 2017 and sold it on December 31st, 2019, you would get $7,206. In other words, that $1,000 investment was a seven-fold increase in just three years. 
And historically with Bitcoin, we've seen dramatic growth that has not been available from any other asset in the world. And so nothing has grown quite as fast as, as Bitcoin. Now, again, this is my opinion. Um, I Anyway, enough of that. If you take a look at the history of Bitcoin prices, you can look at any day. I picked January 1, 2017, because it just made sense to pick the first day of the year. But if you went to uh, July 15th or July 23rd of any particular year or any other date throughout the year, uh, based on the research I've done, I did not find uh, any particular time where you could actually lose money with Bitcoin. Um, so you might take a look if you can find a, 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 a three-year period where I'm wrong. I would be interested in hearing about that. Um, but until then, uh, this is valuable information because most people that lose money with Bitcoin, it happens because they didn't hold on to it long enough. So I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to think more long term and you need to hold it when you see massive drops in prices. Don't just let that scare you and make you sell it. If you have a vision that, hey, I need to buy and hold this for three years or more um, and, and you actually stick to that, uh, your, your chances of making money are extremely strong. But I think they're even better than that. Now, we're going to take a look at how wealth is distributed throughout the world today. Now, today, this pie would represent $360 trillion. The wealth in the world uh, accounts for $360 trillion. And so the top 1% own half of the world's wealth. And if the top 1%, that means this piece of the pie is $180 trillion in value. If this top 1% took 1% of their wealth or $1.8 trillion and bought Bitcoin with it, that would push Bitcoin from a price of today right around $10,000 Last time I looked, Bitcoin was right at $9,800, and today is uh, June 11th, 2020. And so uh, taking 1% of this half of a pie would actually push the price of Bitcoin from $9,800 to $100,000. That's just with 1% of this pie. Now, to put that in perspective, that's actually a low figure because that number assumes that you distributed that $1.8 trillion evenly among all Bitcoin. The problem is, is 100% of the Bitcoin is not for sale. In fact, more than 60% of all Bitcoin has been held in the same address for more than a year. And so at any one point in time, there's only a small amount of Bitcoin that's actually for sale. And so if, if $1.8 trillion came from this half of the world's wealth and, was, and they bought Bitcoin, uh, that would actually push it much, much higher because that $1.8 trillion wouldn't get evenly distributed. There's a whole bunch of people who own Bitcoin that just wouldn't be selling it. Um, and we've seen that historically. If you look throughout the history of Bitcoin, in terms of how much money, how much Bitcoin actually came out of wallets that have been holding on to their Bitcoin for more than a year, uh, it doesn't drop that much. So there's a lot of people that are holding on to Bitcoin much longer than a year, and they're thinking in terms of, of five years, 10 years, and possibly much longer than that. And so I just want to start this out. We would see if they took if the wealthy people just took 1%, we would see an enormous wealth transfer into the pockets of people who own Bitcoin today. Now, when you're talking about the growth of something as people purchase it, because we want to look at the growth of Bitcoin. As Bitcoin goes, today Bitcoin is less than half a percent of the world's population are actually invested in Bitcoin. Some figures put it much lower than that, and I don't know of any figures that are putting it higher than half a percent today. But if we see 10% of the world's population owning Bitcoin, or 40%, or 60%, or what about 70%? Do you think it's possible? Could 70% of the world own Bitcoin? 
It is possible. Let me show you that in just a second. But before I do, the reason I'm showing you this chart is this is a, a chart over time. And you can see that when you're an early adopter, it grows very, very slowly. It grows in very small increments. And then as the early majority and the late majority get involved, the speed of growth becomes much more rapid. Well, with Bitcoin, we're way down in this area. And I think there is a possibility that we could see uh, 50, 60, 70 percent of the world's population actually owning Bitcoin. And here's why. Today, there's 7.75 billion people in the world and 5.19 billion of them own smartphones. They have mobile phones. In other words, 67% of the world own a mobile phone, which makes them candidates for purchasing Bitcoin. In fact, 60% of the world's population are internet users. They have access to the internet, 60%. And so we really could, because 60% of the world is on the internet, 67% have uh, mobile phones, we really could see a, uh, an adoption of 40, 50, 60, and maybe more percentage of the world actually owning Bitcoin because you need internet access, you need a smartphone, or you need a computer of some sort in order to buy and trade with Bitcoin. And so we really could see much larger mass adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in the future. But let's look at uh, the adoption of technology over time. So back in the 1900s when electricity and radio and TV and all those sorts of things were invented, it took decades of time, like from 1940 to 1950 in some cases, to reach any sort of mass adoption. It took many decades. But if you look down here at these straight up lines, you're looking at things like social media, smartphones, and tablets. And you can see how the lines suddenly go almost straight up. And they did it in uh, two years, three years, five year periods of time. And so in a two year period of time, we've seen things like social media, smartphones, and tablets go from almost nobody owning them to almost everybody worldwide involved. You know, tablets have gotten up to close to 50% of adoption. Smartphones is really, I don't know where they got their numbers. This chart is showing, oh, maybe that's social media, that 80% of the world is on social media, um, and that maybe the smartphones is this this line, I'm not sure. They, they didn't do a very good job in helping me figure out which color matches up with which one of these lines. But here's the point I want to get out of this chart. The amount of time that it takes to go from zero to 60, 80, 100 percent of the world using something is no longer decades, but rather years. It just takes a few years to go from uh, 1 percent, 2 percent, all the way up to 40, 60, 80 percent. And so back here, when I talked about buying and holding Bitcoin for three years. The most profitable time to do that was back in the early days of Bitcoin. You would have made $2.6 million in, if you bought Bitcoin from January 1, 2011 and held it until December 31st, 2013. And a lot of people poo-poo the idea that we'll never see a time where Bitcoin grows like that. But if we see this kind of mass adoption hit Bitcoin, Maybe that'll actually be small potatoes. Maybe that'll be a small number. I don't know, but the potential is there. It's possible it could go much more dramatic than this number was in just a short three-year period. But even if it's only one of these other figures, even if it only does another seven thousand, getting seven thousand dollars on a one-year inve uh, on a thousand-dollar investment over a three-year period of time that is still a great return. That is still something to be shouting about. But when this part of the curve actually happens, I think we're going to see the numbers go up much faster. All right, so 
we're going to look at a poll that Fidelity did. Now, who is Fidelity? Fidelity Investments is one of the largest investment firms in the world. And so they have, well, let's, let me give you a little bit of history about Fidelity because I didn't know much about Fidelity until I started looking into their history. So the first thing I want you to know is that Fidelity's been around for 74 years. It's an it's an old money institution. It's, it's a conservative institution. They don't jump out on a limb and recommend something that's just wild and crazy because they have investors that they need to take care of their money. And the last thing they want to do is make people think that they've gone nuts and, and have them pull their money out of Fidelity Investments. Fidelity Investments is one of the largest asset managers in the world with 2.46 trillion assets under management. Let me read that again. 2.46 trillion assets under management from institutions and a combined total customer asset value of 6.7 trillion. And so what they mean by assets under management is there's a certain amount of money that Fidelity is responsible for investing and making decisions about, and that accounts for the $2.46 trillion. <coughs> Excuse me. This $6.7 trillion is money that individual investors and other investors have, have put into Fidelity investments in one way or another, but they're being self, uh, they're making the decisions themselves on that, on that money. Uh, okay, because it's not an asset under management. And so ultimately we're talking about $6.7 trillion that fall under the Fidelity umbrella. And when they, when you talk about institutions and wealthy people, Fidelity has a strong relationship with them. And there, that relationship is such that when they do a poll, they're going to get good information from their own customers. And so Fidelity is sharing a poll they did about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency that went out to Fidelity's customers. Let's take a look at the results of that poll. So Boston and London on June 9th, 2020, so just two days ago, because today is June 11th, digital assets are gaining in favorability and appeal among institutional investors, with almost 80 percent of investors surveyed finding something appealing about the asset class. Now that is a mind-blowing statement because in 2016 it was the institutions that told you that you'd be crazy if you buy Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. They were saying that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is rat poison squared and so uh, publicly, institutions and institutional investors were really, in 2016, 2017, even 2018, uh, these, these people were telling us how bad Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is. And for 80% find something appealing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is mind-boggling. They've done a 180 degree turn and all of a sudden they're interested and they find something appealing about it. In a comprehensive survey of almost 800 institutional investors across the United States and Europe, 36%, now that's a lot, 36%, that's more than a third of the respondents say they are currently invested in digital assets. So wait a minute. You're telling me that institutions and institutional investors that 33% of them already own some Bitcoin? Absolutely. And 6 out of 10 or 60% believe digital assets have a place in their investment portfolio. Now let's catch that one for a second. 60% but only 36% have actually taken action. So the other 30% sound like they're planning on taking action in the near future. But that's that's not the best part. Wait, hold on, it gets even better. 36% of respondents, 27% in the United States, and 45% in Europe say they are currently invested in digital assets. Now, I've noticed when it comes to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular, for whatever reason, the U.S. has been much slower in adoption 
whereas elsewhere in the world they have been much faster in adoption. And you notice this isn't uh, twice as many, but it, it's, it's close to twice as many. Uh, almost twice as many European institutions are investing already invested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency than those that are in the United States. And so that's, that's very, very interesting. So not only are they planning on getting invested, a lot of them in Europe have already done so, almost half. And, and 27% of the U.S. is already, uh, of the, those surveyed in the United States have already done it. So let's move on. Over 60% buy digital assets directly. In other words, somewhere they have a Bitcoin address and that Bitcoin address contains that institution's assets, their Bitcoin assets. Bitcoin continues to be the digital asset of choice Ethereum is the second choice among institutions. And so while institutions are focused primarily on Bitcoin and a few of them are focused on Ethereum, the benefit that, that is following on Bitcoin and Ethereum affects the rest of the cryptocurrency market. Because when Bitcoin goes up, the rest of the cryptocurrency market goes up. And when Bitcoin goes down, the rest of the cryptocurrency market goes down. Now, I'm making a blanket statement, and that blanket statement is not true 100% of the time. But if you look at the vast majority, if you look at Coin360 on any day, um, typically if Bitcoin is up, you'll see all of them in the green. And if Bitcoin is down, you'll see a majority of them in the red. Um, in fact, the only time you tend to see a smattering of reds and greens is when Bitcoin is only up or down a small amount, where it's basically just been going sideways, not going up, not going down. Now, here in yellow is the kicker. Looking out five years into the future, 91% of respondents who are open to exposure to digital assets in a portfolio expect to have at least five, half of a percent of their portfolio allocated to digital assets. <clears throat> now, if you remember earlier, I was talking to you about how, look, all we need is 1% of the wealthy putting their wealth into Bitcoin to see a $100,000 Bitcoin. That might be able to happen with half a percent of these folks putting their assets into Bitcoin um, just because of the limited amount of supply that's available for sale. So when they're purchasing their Bitcoin, there's only a small amount of Bitcoin that they can actually buy. Now, this survey included information from pensions, family offices, digital and traditional hedge funds, financial advisors, endowments, and foundations. And so the people that they're surveying are the people in the 1%. So let's take a look at this chart again. We're talking about the one percenters. These are the people that control 50% of the world's wealth. And these people as a group are beginning to think in terms of taking half a percent or 1%. In some cases, I've read stuff that <clears throat> they're actually talking about doing 2%. Now you might say, why would they want to put 2% of their wealth from whatever they have it in today into Bitcoin. Well, here's why. They also know that Bitcoin has the potential to go up 10x like I was talking about earlier. They've done their research. If, if you're an institution and you're thinking about putting millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into some sort of asset, you're going to spend money and time in research to figure out, is this a good idea? And that research, we can see the conclusion to that research based on what we read here, with 27% in the U.S. already taking action, 45% in Europe already taking action. The conclusions they came to with their research told them that this is a good thing to do, and they're already starting to put large amounts of money now, the survey didn't tell us how much these 27 and 45% in, have invested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So what I'm about to say is my opinion. It's not based on any fact. It's just my assessment of what I see. If these guys had put 
half a percent, one percent, two percent into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I think the price would be a whole lot higher. I think the amount that they have in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and again, this is my opinion, I could be completely wrong. It wouldn't surprise me and it wouldn't be the first time. Um, but I think that the percentage that they actually own is actually really small and that they have plans on buying more in the future. That's my guess. Well, and I have no way to figure out how accurate or inaccurate it is. Maybe we'll find some information out someday, or maybe somebody that's listening to this broadcast will run across something that gives us a more definitive figure on what percent uh, does the wealthy have of their wealth in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. That would be really interesting to know. Anyway... I think we're going to start seeing a portion of this money moving into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And as more and more of it moves, it's an opportunity for those of us that have already gotten into it to see some dramatic gains. We've already seen super dramatic gains in the past, but I think there's the potential that we could see even bigger gains in the future. So that's my video today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have questions? Do you have thoughts? Do you have comments? Do you disagree with something that I said? I'd love to hear from you. Please comment in the comment section below. Um, and if you disagree with me, I would love to hear your polite disagreements. Because look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know together, we'll grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please share your polite disagreements below and we'll hash it out in the future. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl, and hey, do me a favor and have a fantastic day.